All right, hello, welcome to uh, day 199, 365 days towards racial change. I am Tom Lynn's and I back, the one and only. That is me. I'm there, right there, me. <laughs> I hate it when I get calls from bill collectors and they ask me to verify my identity, but it's me. <laughs> There's not much more I can do about that. I'm sorry, I digress. I guess I'm in a good mood. Uh, day uh, 199, starting tomorrow, we're going to go to a big extended session in Uncle Tom's Cabin. I'm actually excited about that. I love that book. And a um, little bit of housekeeping uh, to begin with. I'm going on vacation, but that does not mean we're going to miss out on any of this top-notch programming going on here at Racial Change, you'll still get, I'm uh, still going to be posting what, um, for my private, the people on my private email list, you'll be getting an email about some housekeeping items and some changes, got to massage it a little bit while I'm away, but you'll still get a post every day, so be, be aware of that, um, however you're following this project. All right. Uh, why are we here? Here we go. Listen, it's the mind of America. <laughs> I'm seeing America. You know, I almost wish I, I worked a day job, came home too tired to find out what happened in the world <laughs> during the day, but I work a night job, and so I get real time. American progress, and it's it's sad. I, I wonder if I'm the blame. I started paying attention to it, and it just keeps going downhill, downhill, down. Uh, very sad. Very sad. Very dark. America's very dark in a lot of ways. Uh, maybe I should watch Sesame Street and more cartoons. <laughs> and more animal uh, you know, nature stuff. You know, I think you see t television programming trying to do that on Fridays, Saturday mornings. It used to be. I remember when they dumped all the violence. I couldn't find, I couldn't get my violence fixed on a Saturday morning. You know, everything was fluffy animals and stuff, and I was disgusted. <laughs> That's a problem, though. We're going to talk about that today. Um, about how things begin as satirical and how, how things are so innocent, benign, harmless in the beginning. And then they grow into these creatures that consume flesh and bone uh, and whatnot. I, you know, I smile and I, I give that narrative. And, I mean, that's how it starts. Right? So we got to be careful about that. We're going to talk about that a little bit. The mind of America. Is the, was the black mind still wrapped up in slavery? I was at work going through a little issue at work. And you've seen it here and there. I'm not, I don't want to waste my time here ranting about work. But I was relaying my situation to a coworker, and she was like, "Well, you got to understand." And I was like, "Wait a minute, you know, why, why is the black man always giving ground and understanding and going above and beyond and not being reciprocated and not being uh, financially, monetarily rewarded?" I mean, good attaboy, pat on the back, but, you know, where's the, I don't know, where's the stuff? You know, see, so other powerful entities in America get stuff. So, you know, that's part of my coming out, coming to, is understanding, look, I, I deserve some compensation for my hard work, my understanding. You know, my malleability. Consequently, 
I don't know if it'll ever come to this, because since I took this stand, they, they're very standoffish. Just let me run my own show. Don't know how to come at me. Except one, the one manager, he's leaving, so he doesn't give a damn. He never really did anyway. I kind of under, understand where he's coming from, his apathy about life in the world. <laughs> very abrasive, but this situation helps me understand that. But what they don't know is like, you know, if they want me in certain positions again, then I'm going to demand payment. You know, especially the, the specialized work that I was doing. You know, but I'm making the same as I'm same as everybody else in this in the space. Uh, I don't think so. That that doesn't make any sense. I'm doing a specialized task. I need a driver's license. I had to get drug tested. I, you know, there's they're monitoring and stuff, uh, accountability, but no increase in pay. I bet you the other powerful people in power demand an uh, increase in pay and, and get it. That's the that's the issue on the, the the subject of the black mind in America and, and how that. How are we navigating, you know? Yeah. Oh, but somebody else will jump in there. Guess what? In my workplace, they didn't just jump in there if I didn't do the work. They stepped on me on the way. <laughs> so, you know, if I do it, I get nothing. If I don't do it, I get nothing. I, I might as well save my strength. You know, and, and also check this out. Since I stopped driving that little truck and moving their uh, trailers around, my bathtub is clean when I take a shower afterward. I'm like, wow, that I'm in a dirty environment. I mean, I'm already going. I'm going to take a shower, but this heavy silt came off my body <laughs> leaving terrible rings in my fat like mud uh, almost like I was swimming in dirt all night no 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 that doesn't make sense up here yeah but see they, they you know power doesn't empower you know well this kind of power doesn't empower uh, subordinates or those that uh, binds as lesser so they can have it they can have it. I, don't, I get paid the same whether I do it or not might as well save my strength have some peace of mind that the same woman I talked to at work talked about having peace of mind can't be peace of mind can't beat it I'll keep you stay tuned on that the white mind you know its power structure that the, the the one head manager, boy, he doesn't talk to me much at all that I stood up, you know, and uh, that privilege. He doesn't want to share that space. Oh, no, no, you don't share that privilege space. You know, we're talking white and black here. But the white mind of privilege and power, uh, you know, struggles with sharing those privileges, those powers with black people. Very sad. Financial literacy, another big subject. I'm concerned about. I'm I'm deep into understanding it. I'm reading a book, uh, Creature from Je Jekyll Island, and I will talk. Oh, well, uh, this year is not for that, but it's quite a story <laughs> about money, uh, how it impacts. Uh, existence on this planet you know people that have it want to keep it people don't have it want it people that have it keep it away and, and all this chess game going on about uh, wealth and resources but we we're at the mercy of that institution uh, to this uh, same degree 
that our financial ignorance persists. So we got to keep uh, got to keep some financial education going somehow. Investments, products that are going to outpace inflation. Understanding that inflation um, uh, is a, it's a very um, very intense subject and. Understanding how inflation is an attack on your pocketbook, on my pocketbook. Very sad, you know, uh, how uh, the government floods um, the economy with dollars uh, in um, minimum wage is up to 15 an hour. Big deal. Everything else is going to go up proportionately. Yay, done nothing. And because everything's going up proportionally, you're getting less for your for that same dollar. That's it in a nutshell. Don't worry about understanding it, but, but do some research. Do some due diligence about how your money is working or not. Uh, how the government devalues your money when it throws more money in. It's, it's counterintuitive, but that's what's happening. That's inflation. So uh, be aware of that. All right, day 199. Um, I had a bunch of titles and stuff like that. Uh, remember the Jews. Uh, this is going to, this is a response to a recent news cycle. Our president is encouraging racism, chanting racist, um, Remarks and stuff like that, and he he loves he loves that. You know, I picture him like the kind of guy that when he sees Hitler, the, those black and white videos of Hitler encouraging the crowd, Mussolini, <laughs> guys like that. Boy, you know, he, he puts himself. He identifies with that. Jim Jones had the same problem. Look where he ended up. But that, that's, a, that's just some issues there. And uh, so that's that's going. But, you know, ever since he's kind of, he's been in that space, the country just has gotten darker and uh, more unashamed in its racism. And other you know, groups are coming out. Um, the New Zealand massacre. You know, that, that individual, you know, he attributed some of his motivation from uh, listening to our president. <laughs> My goodness. Remember the Jews. Now, at the top of this, I'll say, I say remember the Jews because I, I learned a couple of years ago. I, I've, been, I've been involved in communities and social justice to some degree and all that sensitive to it for a while and I, I was in a class we were doing a, a workshop or some kind of breakout session years ago when I was working with the uh, interpersonal violence community stalking domestic violence and sexual assault we're going to talk about that in a second but uh, I was with this community and it was interesting I'll never forget this lesson that the Jewish Holocaust, the uh, ghettos, concentration camps, mass murders, uh, things like that began as satirical tirades, jokes, uh, the cartoons with the, the Jewish nose was exaggerated um, and, and, and uh, escalating with, with Hitler from his podium and his space, you know, chants and whipping up the crowd and stuff with his rhetoric. Uh, these things started out, you know, so, well, you know, it's something you would pass over um, if you had no sensitivity to that and its potential, you know, and then you open up the news and they're finding Dachau 
Auschwitz, <laughs> you know, things like that, you know, uh, and, and much of the same way, uh, slavery, you know, they noticed uh, the hardworking black individual. Sure, there was some satir satirical stuff, jokes about that, uh, compounded with uh, some passivity of black folks and conditioning. Uh, we, we talked about some of the uh, edicts, especially Maryland, where they say oh, only white folks are going to participate in the wealth of uh, the community. And then uh, escalating into all black people or will be slaves 25 years later. Uh, I don't have the exact dates, uh, but, but we talked about that before. And that's you know, that's where this, um, it, the danger comes, you know. you know. I'm a black man. I'm seeing this happen and occur, and, oof, you know, what, what's going to, you know, I, I work at night. I travel at night to go to work, you know. So what's out there, you know, it's, it's getting hard to, to leave the my room, but I got to pay my bills. But what's going to be some some whacked out maniac with justification, almost endorsed by the president, um, doing some random act of violence on me and whatnot? Got to watch my back so much in America. We talked about racism in the Constitution, right? It's in there, uh, in the description. There's a link to uh, James Madison's notes. <laughs> and like, I had to see it for myself. I'm like, what are they talking about? And it's so, it's easy to find. It's right, right there. Just do, you know, uh, the way I have it set up, you go to this website, pick a date, and then search for black. And you, you'll find black or slavery. And you'll find in those notes, those notes, are the brainstorm Madison and Jefferson? Uh, the they're the brainstorm. They're the foundation of the Constitution, right? It's just that as the the document became more public, they obscured the language in there. But it's it's in there. James Madison's notes on the Constitution. That's a very clear. He and that, you know, it wasn't like. Oops, boy, we made a mistake. Listen, he said, don't publish these notes until after I'm dead. One of those types of things, like who shot JFK films and notes and stuff like that, right? Because he knew what he was doing. It was an intentional attack on black people, right? They had to figure out how to do that, how to keep them, how to keep black people enslaved present to the world and present to the world this inclusive land of the free, home of the brave. Uh, we talked about Jim Crow, you know, semi-slavery, like, you know, even after the various emancipations, you know, incarceration goes up, you know, they're just keeping people incarcerated to, to do labor, essentially. You know, unfair business practices, from, uh, you know, other groups, ethnic groups in America. You know, all of this, I mean, I bet you we could find all their roots go back uh, to where it began, and it was somebody poking fun at another group or another individual. You know? And this is something that we talk about. We see this more. It's in your notes, brief notes, in the description about, you know, you got to dehumanize you got to marginalize. You don't just outright start a campaign of violence, abuse, murder against uh, an individual or a group. It takes a while. You know, you've got to discredit the name, discredit them in the eyes of the public. Use media to keep, uh, keep them marginalized dehumanized, then, then you can do your work on them, right? 
you know, this guy. <laughs> and the crowd is just as ignorant. They're saying send her back. These are four the either news well here's what here's let me get you on the same page if you're not following the news cycle. Four congresswomen. There are various colors. They're not white. You know, have issue with Trump, and so there's the, they're going back and forth. And so when, when the president is at a rally lately, you know, the crowd is saying, send her back, send her back. And it's like, guys, these are American citizens. Three born here, one natural, natural, naturalized uh, from Somalia. And uh, they're saying, send her back. Like, this is their country. This is where they're, literally where they're from. And the crowd is, like, is in, in a, such an ignorant state, ignorant passive state uh, behind this president. It's very sad. You know? we got to be active listeners. we gotta, we got to be engaged. You know, I used to work with this inter interpersonal violence group sexual assault, stalking, domestic violence. I was more of an educator. I didn't do uh, the intervention because naturally when you wave that banner, uh, you're going to attract mostly women uh, you know, with, neg they've had negative experiences out in the world. Uh, but I didn't do the intervention. But we had a phone line and stuff like that. Uh, I, I could, I, it's something, I could read textbooks and go to a class, but I could never be effective at that kind of thing. So the women, um, most of whom experienced that kind of thing, were on that end of it. Uh, I was more in the educational end. I've got assault, victimization issues uh, that I deal with and recovering from and all that that I'm navigating. So I, I was, a, I guess, an effective teacher on some of these issues. But from that experience, you know, now I'm sensitive when I'm watching TV. I'm sensitive to sex, sexism. I'm sensitive uh, to power and control issues between men and women. I see it now in the workplace. I'm not uh, ignorant and passive about... Uh, why women are apprehensive towards me in public. I'm kind of a large black man. So that's got its issues. Oh. Although statistically, try to get this, I don't have exact numbers. And I hate to use this term, but listen, interracial sexual assault is a, it's an anomaly. It's rare, you know. You know, white women are assaulted by white men. Black women are assaulted by black men, generally, you know. So it's interesting that when I'm out in the public that white women, Asians, Asian women are so apprehensive when statistically it does, like, they're their conditioning does not bear out with the facts, you know, which, you know, ignorance drives racism and prejudice. So, you know, we understand that. Uh, you know, we'll talk, you know, we talked before, we'll talk again about how white power has uh, gotten its hands into that dynamic and, and made it as though black women are promiscuous and black men are rapists. That's not the, uh, that's not today's subject, but that, that's what happened, you know. And this goes back, even all the way back to Frederick Douglass, uh, runaway slave that did well and wrote about these things. He even mentioned this, um, this situation in society, so it's going on back then, and it's it's just again dehumanization, marginalization. It's white power making 
those with black skin uh, some type of, of sexual aberration, right? But you got to be in tune. You got to be a thinker to see through that, to, 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 to parse the argument, uh, disseminate truth and fiction, right? And see what's, we'll see what's really going on. Uh, you know, I say all that to say, you know, I'm active about how I see the dynamic between men and women. And this uh, project has made me also more sensitive to how we are being um, conditioned and manipulated. But I know I'm being conditioned and manipulated or that an attempt is being made along those lines. Uh, because I'm actively engaged, right? I mean, you, you've got auditoriums, thousands of people saying, send her back. They've not done their research, and they won't, because they're lazy and they don't think, right? And this can, this is the problem. You've got non-thinking people agitating America's darkness, and, and we're not that far away from, you know, wholesale, open oppression on black people. You know, um, in this instance, there's the religious element, you know, Islam, what have, well, ever since 9-11, Islam it has left a bad taste um, in the entire world. <clears throat> uh, but uh, these women, uh, one of whom is of the Islamic faith, so that, that makes a note that kind of escalates the problem a little bit as well. Listen, you know, we see the same, it's a pattern, it's the same pattern and I'm, I'm troubled that we're not engaged in it. Well, I missed my, uh, we were right into it. I forgot my standard introduction, but I say it enough. I say it almost every day. We can miss it once in a while. Uh, but these outbreaks of violence, you know, around the world, you know, you just never know. You know, in our places of worship, all these things, listen, they started out most likely, doesn't, you know, who just is struck with hatred to the point where they just snap and want to blow up stuff and massacre people with, with high-powered weapons? That's, uh, it can happen, yeah, but I'm guessing, you know, it happened, you know, some innocent conversation over a beer, smoking a cigarette, you know, um, joking at the workplace and whatnot. From that, you get, uh, it grows and escalates. By the way, I don't, I don't like, I don't watch comedy much. I'm careful, I'm careful with comedy. Because that's that's how it starts. That's where it starts. That's what a, this whole thing is about. The genesis of uh, slavery, murder, violence. You know, you know where it, did it could it have started out as some boy, some little joke, a little cartoon. You know. A little, little jab in the ribs to, to get us laughing and to let down our guard, to, to put our morality to sleep. Where we're talking about sending people back that are from this country. You know, like you want to tell them, you want to send me back? My family's been here for hundreds of years. Right, you know, there, you know, this is my home. I'm from America. You know, 
Be careful. Be mindful. Stay awake. Actively listen and watch. Um, you know, stay on top of that. Don't fall asleep. Be careful. Always be vigilant. Uh, racism is alive and real. And, and my, my opinion, I'm of the opinion is like, you know, if certain powers that be had their way, they would totally enslave, openly enslave, coerce. I, I, I see it in the attitude that I'm getting at the workplace. They, that they could just shake me and make me do it their way. I see it. It's there. I'm Tom Liz Nyback. Uh, plenty to talk about. Stay tuned. Check your emails uh, for some, some minor changes as I head out for vacation. Prepare for vacation. Thank you very much. Day 199 out of the way. How about some story time? It's really long overdue. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do some extended story time. Looking forward to that. Stay tuned. Be well and stay awake and alert. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.